Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use risk premiums as a trading indicator. Hopefully this will help in generating some ideas for your own personal use. To start off, we're gonna load up some packages. We are going to be using the FinHub API to get daily data. Alternatively, you can use Yahoo Finance. Please check out my previous video on this particular API if you wanna use FinHub as a data source. So the very first block that we have is to get the stock data. To calculate the risk premiums, we're gonna be using the queues as our benchmark. And for our risky assets, we're gonna calculate the risk premium for all the constituents inside of the queues. And in line 52, we're gonna go ahead and merge that character vector and pass each of those tickers into this function to get historical data. Once we get all of our data, it's gonna go ahead and merge all of the closes together. And it should look like this table. And the full table will show all the five years that we requested data for. Once we have all the closing prices for each of the tickers, we're gonna use ROC to calculate the daily returns. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the risk-free rate. Now, since I want to rebalance every month, I want to use the one month rate. We're gonna request that rate from Fred, and this will be the symbol for the one month. We're gonna go ahead and assign it into our global environment. We're gonna use NALOCF to fill any NAs, and then we're gonna convert this to a daily rate since it gets returned as an annual rate. So to do that, I'm just gonna simply divide it by 100 and then divide it by 360. And in order for my stock data and rate to have the same index, I'm just gonna pass the index of my stock data so it only grabs those dates. Now, once we have this loaded up, we can go to the next block, which will calculate the risk premiums. And I'm gonna be using the Capim risk premium function inside of performance analytics. And the first thing I do is merge all my returns for the stocks along with the risk-free rate. I'm gonna fill any NAs with zero, and then I'm gonna compute the risk premiums for all the stocks by passing in our returns. And for the function, I'm gonna be applying it to all the stocks inside of returns. And for the risk-free rate, I'm gonna be using our monthly T-bill rate and you should get a table looking like this one. So as you see, we have monthly risk premiums for all the stocks. Now that we have all the risk premiums, we can go ahead and assign a stock that we want to take a look at and plot the risk premium. So in this instance, I'm gonna be using Meta. I'm gonna merge the stock returns along with the risk premiums and then plot it. So we take a look at that plot. We see the cumulative return for Meta and the risk premiums on a monthly basis. One of the things that standed out to me were at the peaks of the risk premiums, which acted as a confirmation almost that the stock will continue rising, not all the time, but for most of the stocks I did look at, that theory seemed to hold. Now from here, what I decided to do was to add some trading signals. So for the rules, I wanted to be long the stock as long as the risk premium was positive and short as long as the risk premium was negative, but also by one month treasury. And I also added a return in case we don't wanna go short. That is, we wanna be long as long as the risk premium is positive. And when we get a negative risk premium, instead of shorting, we're just gonna buy the one month treasury. So we'll take a look at those returns as well. But to reconstruct this, I'm just reassigning the table I used to plot my stock data and risk premium into trade table. To add the signal, I'm gonna use if else, so if the risk premium is less than zero, I wanna be short, otherwise be long. I'm also gonna be adding the risk-free rate to that table, and now we can calculate the returns. So for the long stock return, if the signal is one, I'm just gonna multiply my signal with a daily return for the stock. Similarly, if the signal is a negative one, meaning we're short, I'm gonna multiply the stock's return with our negative signal. Now to get the return for the one month treasury, if we're short, I'm gonna assign a new column for the return on the bill called long return bill. I'm gonna grab all the endpoints at the end of each month when we would typically rebalance. Now we're gonna pass those endpoints into our trade table to extract whether or not we have a short signal. If we do have a short signal, I'm gonna multiply the daily rate of the T-bill times 28, which is the holding time for these bills. And that would be our total return for that T-bill over the month. Next, I'll add a return for the long stock and T-bill in case we don't want a short, which would be just to add the long stock return plus our return on the bill. Now, if we are shorting, then I'm gonna be using 50-50 allocation between shorting and purchasing our bill. So I just added the weights there. Now to get the total return for the trading strategy, I'm gonna add the long stock return, the short stock return, plus the return on the T-bill. Now, if we aggregate all of those returns, and plot them against the benchmark, we will see the total returns are split. 
The benchmark here is Meta, which represents just buying and holding over this time period. Our red line that we see is our long stock return when our risk premium is positive only. The magenta line you see above it is our return for the long stock and long our T-bills, which does not implement shorting. The green line represents our cumulative return for our shorting position only. This blue line that we see is the total return for our T-bills. And if we were to implement this trading strategy on Meta, then our total return for being long when our risk premium is positive and short when the risk premium is negative, along with purchasing a T-bill when we have a negative risk premium, then our cumulative return would be this blue line. In this case, using the risk premiums for trading signals does outperform the benchmark in this case, but you can test and see the results of the other assets that we got risk premiums for, and you would just need to change the block where we assign the ticker. By changing the ticker in line 101, you will see the results for the stock you assign, so long as you have the returns and the risk premiums for it. Well, with that, guys, this concludes the video. I hope you can expand on the script with your own ideas and theories, and I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.